let's look at a couple of ways to find what you need within this system. As a security analyst, your work will likely involve filtering for the information you need. Filtering means searching your system for specific information that can help you solve complex problems. For example, imagine that your team determines a piece of malware contains a string of characters. You might be tasked with finding other files with the same string to determine if those files contain the same malware. Later, we'll learn more about how you can use SQL to filter a database, but Linux is a good place to start basic filtering. First, we'll start with grep. The grep command searches a specified file and returns all lines in the file containing a specified string. Here's an example of this. Let's say we have a file called updates.txt, and we're currently looking for lines that contain the word OS. If the file is large, it would take a long time to visually scan for this. Instead, after navigating to the directory that contains updates.txt, we'll type the command grep os updates.txt into the shell. Notice how the grep command is followed by two arguments. The first argument is the string we're searching for, in this case, os. The second argument is the name of the file we're searching through, updates.txt. When we press enter, bash returns all lines containing the word os. Now, let's talk about piping. Piping is a Linux command that can be used for a variety of purposes. In a moment, we'll focus on how it can be used for filtering. But first, let's talk about the general idea of piping. The piping command sends a standard output of one command as standard input into another command for further processing. It's represented by the vertical bar character. In our context, we can refer to this as the pipe character. Take a moment and imagine a physical pipe. Physical pipes have two ends. On one end, for example, water might enter the pipe from a hot water tank. Then it travels through the pipe and comes out on the other end in a sink. Similarly, in Linux, piping also involves redirection. Output from one command is sent through the pipe and then is used on the other side of the pipe. Earlier in this video, I explained how grep can be used to filter for strings of characters within a file. Grep can also be incorporated after a pipe. Let's focus on this example. The first command ls instructs the operating system to output the file and directory contents of the report's subdirectory. But because the command is followed by the pipe, the output isn't returned to the screen. Instead, it's sent to the next command. As we just learned, grep searches for a specified string of characters. In this case, it's users. But where is it searching? Since grep follows a pipe, the output of the previous command indicates where to search. In this case, that output is a list of files and directories within the report's subdirectory. It will return all files and directories that contain the word users. Okay, let's explore this in bash. So we can better understand how the filter works, let's first output everything in the report's directory. If we were already in the directory, we would just need to input ls. But since we're not, we'll also specify the path to this directory. When we press enter, the output indicates there are seven files in the reports directory. Because we want to return only the files that contain the word users, we'll combine this ls command with piping and the grep command. As the output demonstrates, Linux has been instructed to return only files that contain the word users. The two files that don't contain this string no longer appear. So now you have two different ways that you can filter in Linux while working as an analyst. Navigating through files and filtering are just part of what you need to know. Let's keep exploring the Linux command line. Let's make some branches. What do I mean by that? Well, in a previous video, we discuss root directories and how other subdirectories branch off of the root directory. Let's think again about the file directory system as a tree. The subdirectories are the branches of the tree. They are all connected from the same root, but can grow to make a complex tree. In this video, we'll create directories and files and learn how to modify them. When it comes to working with data and security, organization is key. If we know where information is located, 
It makes it easier to detect issues and keep information safe. In a previous video, we've already discussed navigating between directories, but let's take a moment to examine directories more closely. It's possible you're familiar with the concept of folders for organizing information. In Linux, we have directories. Directories help organize files and subdirectories. For example, within a directory for reports, an analyst may need to create two subdirectories, one for drafts and one for final reports. Now that we know why we need directories, let's take a look at some essential Linux commands for managing directories and files. First, let's take note of commands for creating and removing directories. The mkdir command creates a new directory. In contrast, rmdir removes or deletes a directory. A helpful feature of this command is its built-in warning that lets you know a directory is not empty. This saves you from accidentally deleting files. Next, you'll use other commands for creating and removing files. The touch command creates a new file. And then the rm command removes or deletes a file. And last, we have our commands for copying and moving files or directories. The mv command moves a file or directory to a new location. And cp copies a file or directory into a new location. Okay, now we're ready to try out these commands. First, let's use the pwd command. And then let's display the names of the files and directories in the analyst directory with the ls command. Imagine that we no longer need the old reports directory that appears among the file contents. Let's take a look at how to remove it. We input the rmdir command and follow it with the name of the directory we want to remove, old reports. We can use the ls command to confirm that old reports has been deleted and no longer appears among the contents. Now, let's make another change. We want a new directory for drafts of reports. So we need to use a command mkdir and specify a name for this directory, drafts. If we input ls again, we'll notice the new directory drafts included among the contents of the analyst directory. Let's change into this new directory by entering cd drafts. If we run ls, it doesn't return any output, indicating that this directory is currently empty. But next, we'll add some files to it. Let's say we want to draft new reports on recently installed email and OS patches. To create these files, we input touch email underscore patches .txt and then touch os underscore patches .txt. Running ls indicates that these files are now in the drafts directory. What if we realize that we only need a new report on OS patches and we want to delete the email patches report? To do this, we input the rm command and specify the file to delete as email underscore patches dot txt. Running ls confirms that it's been deleted. Now, let's focus on our commands for moving and copying. We realize that we have a file called email policy in the reports folder that is currently in draft format. So we want to move it into the newly created drafts folder. To do this, we need to change into the directory that currently has that file. Running ls in that directory indicates that it contains several files, including email underscore policy .txt. Then to move that file, we'll enter the mv command followed by two arguments. The first argument after mv identifies a file to be moved. The second argument indicates where to move it. If we change directories into drafts and then display its contents, we'll notice that the email policy file has been moved to this directory. We'll change back into reports. Displaying the file contents confirms that email underscore policy is no longer there. Okay, one more thing. Vulnerabilities.txt is a file that we want to keep in the reports directory. But since it affects an upcoming project, we also want to copy it into the projects directory. 
Since we're already in the directory that has this file, we'll use the cp command to copy it into the projects directory. Notice that the first argument indicates which file to copy, and the second argument provides the path to the directory that it will be copied into. When we press enter, this copies the vulnerabilities file into the projects directory, while also leaving the original within reports. Isn't it cool what we can do with these commands? Now let's focus on one more concept related to modifying files. In addition to using commands, you can also use applications to help you edit files. As a security analyst, file editors are often necessary for your daily tasks like writing or editing reports. A popular file editor is Nano. It's good for beginners. You can access this tool through the Nano command. Let's get familiar with Nano together. We'll add a title to our new draft report, os underscore patches .txt. First, we change into the directory containing that file. Then, we input nano followed by the name of the file we want to edit, os underscore patches .txt. This brings up the nano file editor with that file open. For now, we'll just enter the title os patches by typing this into the editor. We need to save this before returning to the command line, and to do so, we press Control O, and then Enter to save it with the current file name. Then to exit, we press Control X. Great work. We've covered a lot of topics here, from creating and removing directories and files, to copying or moving them, and just now, we've added editing files. You're well on your way to learning Linux commands.